Welcome back mga summers dito sa LOL Varsity League 2017 Summer Term powered by Lenovo Light the Sky. Pero syempre bago tayo pumasok sa ating second match, papakilala muna kami bilang casters niyo. Mark Ticket is serves them with me is Chiso. And we just came from again AMA living up to expectations and for some actually even going way beyond going 2-0 against I Academy. Yeah, of course, staying true to their namesake able to retaliate even <laughs> though they were behind. So showing true to their a uh, very winning form, very clean, uh, nearly clean games, as right. you say, versus I Academy. But we are gonna head into the second matchup of the day between TUP versus UPD. So I'm very excited for this matchup. And of course, later on, right after match two, to conclude the weekend, we're gonna be having MCL Warlocks versus UST Teletigers. So, gaya ng sabi ko kanina, it's interesting because. Itong mga matchups na nakikita natin ngayon, syempre sa nakikita niyo yung schedule guys, yung nakikita nating three teams na nasa top ngayon, they're actually going up against uh, the teams that are kind of lingering towards the mid to lower parts of the ranking. So, let's go ahead and see here. Kasi bagong taon na nga naman and with the long break that we've had, um, yung iba nag-vacation. Pero I know for a fact na a lot of these teams actually, imbis na mag-vacation, imbis na enjoy nila yung Pasko, yung bagong taon, they took advantage of the time to practice. Pero as you can see in the standings nga, um, TUP, AMA, and UST looking to poise themselves to potentially make it into the playoffs. Pero Itamarals, Game Changers, Ablation Esports, a lot of these teams, they still have a chance if I'm not mistaken. So we'll just have to see. That depends pa rin sa how these last few weekends are played off before we head straight into the playoffs. Yeah, and of course, we just saw these standings right there. TUP, they've been at the top of the standings for quite a while now and right. they've been very consistent really steamrolling through their competition I should say and for UPD they've been struggling throughout the LVL trying to uh, get a foothold try and possibly build momentum but unfortunately for them it just hasn't happened yet and now they're facing the top seed so tough opponents for UPD and we'll just have to see though I mean of course definitely we're not seeing the same UPD from like the super powerhouse UPD from last term but still I think with the changes that UPD has done, because, siempre kasi may mga players na gumag graduate talaga, you have to try to keep the legacy alive. So, oh, oh they might not be, yeah, <laughs> beer raising the flag, waving it boldly for UPD. Pero, um, kumbaga, it's a good stepping ground para in uh, set up the groundwork, as I'd say. Na, you, they might not be doing as strong as they were during the previous term where they won champion. I mean, who could be? That's pretty much the apex of what you could reach in the collegiate scene. Pero, kumbaga, if you can't really achieve that during the term, at least set the groundwork to hopefully lead to even greater things come the following terms. Yeah, and of course, it can't be easy. Of course, we know Veer is an LCL champion. And moving towards the LVL, they've paired him, they've teamed him up with fairly new players, so he has to act as that sort of guide and really help the players develop into more uh, fearsome competitors, I right. should say, because they are rookies to the LVL, and Veer being the veteran on the team, he's going to be the one giving out the advice, really trying to lead his team into a great future, I should say. Keep Hopefully. the legacy alive. Exactly. I mean, why not? And, and speaking of legacy, I mean, because... From what we've seen in UPD, we've seen Iconic now going to be making his debut in the PGS. And Neep going to be making a comeback. It, Neep, very interesting. I mean, jumping from PGS goes to LCL after winning. Hey, let's make that huge comeback for the PGS in a few weekends. So, I think yeah. it just goes to show kung how good stepping ground yung collegiate league. Na. If you ever want to take your career to the next level in esports as a potential pro, then hey, why not? Because a lot of people were able to pull it off. Now. And... As we head straight into the drafting phase very soon, I'm very excited to see what these teams have in store for us. Of course, we are on 7.24. Uh, we haven't had a big patch as of recent, so yeah. I think we'll be seeing pretty standard stuff as well. We'll see the OP champions get banned away, and we'll see a lot of pretty standard stuff. Yeah, Just nothing has much. changed over the long holiday. Yeah, I mean, I think, siyempre, hindi lang tayo nagbabakasyon So... We've had those long weeks now. We've been sticking to that same patch. Pero soon, magkakaroon ulit ng patch. So, but for the meantime, syempre, what's also interesting to note then is ito yung panahon ng LVL na kasi bago tayo nag-break, wala pa tayo nakikita ng Zoe because of the two weeks time na ito, just a little bit of a quick insight. Kasi sa competitive, whether it be LCL, LVL, PGS, pag may bagong labas na champion, hindi siya pwedeng gamitin competitively within the first two weeks of its release. Tapos afterwards, yan, 
feel free. So, yun yung reason kung bakit wala pa tayo masyadong nakitang Zoe during before we went on the long break. Pero gaya nga nang nakita natin kanina since it's already 2018 bagong taon. Yeah, be performing as well on that Zoe not to mention. So, yeah, we finally get a little bit of that. Um, how do I put it? The cute see. I don't know. A lot of people find her cute, pero I find her to be very frustrating to play. There against. you go. It's, it's same very sentence, very huh? oppressive. <laughs> and based on how Nyebe played that earlier, huh? Yeah, it's very good annoying to play versus. <laughs> it's very very annoying. Pero I'm wondering kung Mamayaba is it going to be a band between UPD and TU because I'm not really sure if I see these two mid laners using Zoe, but then again, I guess time will tell. Base uh, the maybe first they doctor. practice through yeah. the holidays as we head into the introduction of the players here for TUP Asedia in the top lane, Cha in the jungle, Bam in the mid lane, and for bottom lane it's Navi and Miko. There you go with the coach. And meanwhile, for the players on UPD in the top lane we have Nuna Jungle, of course, is gonna be my boy Beer. Mid we have Solas, ADC, we have Yochan, Support Alto, and of course with their awesome coach Red Mayhem Bartolome. Whew, man, this is pretty interesting as we'll head into the drafting phase once again tup upd taking the stage for match two let's go in and see can tup continue oh to no zoe the oh we were just talking about it earlier it's pretty standard ban though because yeah. if you're playing on the red side you're really forced to ban these op champions and if you see a target ban towards the set you expect orn actually no it's camille <laughs> being banned out by upd so that leaves orn available for tup a very very high priority pick in the current meta, it is still being hovered over, but if TUP gets this, they'll, they're gonna have a very, very solid top lane. Definitely. I mean, especially, we've been talking about TUP for having a CD. one of the star players in the LVL right now. So, I'm kind of interested in how respond to UPD dito, if they have a game plan up their sleeves. Knowing Mayhem especially, I'm pretty sure he has something to deal with that Orin later on, not just in terms of who they match it up with, but just the overall composition that could deal with that. Meanwhile, it looks like UPD gonna be going for the Shen as well as the Sivir for both Nuna and Yochan respectively. Yeah, so going for a team you're in the draft is UPD. They have the Shen, the Stand United for protection, and the Sivir as well with their ultimate can speed up her teammates and possibly go for engages. And right now, the response from TUP, they pick knockups. They have so much CC across Ooh. these first three picks and I'm scared for UPD at this point. If TUP gets close enough to your members, they're just going to be in a bounce house, bouncy castle sort of situation where they just keep bouncing up and down. And there's really no escape from that. Whew. Meanwhile, looking at the second rotation of bands coming in from UPD and TUP, Misfortune and Leblanc taken off the board from both Nabi and Bomb respectively. Meanwhile, Sejuani and the Azir taken away from Beer and Sola. So UPD, as a response for this first rotation, did not are. Oh, UPD, they've picked three Wait. possible top laners. Come on. I think the Shen's going support. Bam. Whoa, again. That is locked in. Okay. All about U UPD throwing the curveballs right okay, there. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that they're going to have Nona play the Nar. We've seen Nona perform on this champion, and I think Nar is one of those picks that can deal with the Orin because Orin is a melee champion and very standard. Nar can match up versus melee tank top laners very well. And I don't see the Shen going mid lane. So I'm pretty sure Solis will stick to this Jace and just hold down the mid lane. Let's just see what will Alto pick here because the Shen could still go jungle. And yeah, I think we will Ooh. see a Shen support. Man, oh man, it's been a while since I've seen some Shen support. Wondering how it will fare though. But so far, I think it will work pretty okay. If we're going to look at the composition that TFP has, we'll be able to deal with... Oh, okay, a little bit of switcheroo too. Whoa, okay. Wait, okay. Help me digest everything, Chisto. I know you're the better guy at analyzing most of this. So, what's going on here for you? Jungle Land? Jace. Whew. Uh, okay. Have you seen any of that before? I've seen Jungle Jace before in solo queue, but in competitive League of Legends. This is very, very rare to see. I wonder what Veer has he has some quality cheese prepared for oh, us yeah. and everyone watching and i'm very interested to see how this pans out it looks like they went for the standard nar top lane oriana in the mid lane and the shen support as well coming from upd i wonder how will this work they do have the silver to help speed him up land those taunts and it's gonna be very tricky considering that the alice you can just knock him away 
Oof. I mean, we'll just have to go ahead and see Cheese. So this is a very interesting turn around. Turn of events, actually, for UPD. But then again, this is what I love about the LVL. And I love the creativity coming in from Mayhem here. But let's go ahead and see, can UPD Liman execute based on what has been given to them by their coach as far as composition and how they play this out against TUP, currently sitting at the top of the ladder, not to mention. Yeah, so of course, execution is the name of the game. And if I would compare these two teams, I'd say TUP. They're very, very strong mechanically, whereas UPD, they're very strong when it comes to the macro game. But right now, we are heading straight into the Summoner's Rift for this matchup between TUP on the blue side, facing off against UPD on the red side. Here we go, guys. Of course, siempre kung saan man kayo nanonood, whether it be Facebook Live or siempre sa ating YouTube link, make sure na yung share nyo gaming.youtube.com slash pagegarina slash live. Let us know kung sino ang tingin nyo mananala dito. TUP ba o UPD? Let us know what you think of Jungle Jace. Oh, yeah. Yan pa. Actually, that's a good talking point right there. I can imagine all the theories running in our chat. Like, what? Probably a few positives, some probably thinking that UPD going out of their mind. But of course, knowing these players, Shemper, Maybe especially... They are. Yeah, you think so? It takes a special kind of player to lock in Jungle Jace in a competitive League <laughs> of Legends match. I mean, you have to be a certain level of crazy. That's true, that's true. If you want to pull that off, whereas TUP, they've... They're playing very standard here. They have the Alistair to peel for the vein, and of course, their late game is very, very scary. Having Orin... A lot of engage from the champion and Vladimir in vain as well. So much DPS for these team fights. So late game team fights will be very scary for UPD to face. Oof. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and check out the starts for both junglers. Looks Double like relic shield. Oh, oh man, UPD okay. just really bringing on the creativity for 2018 here, ladies and gentlemen. New Year's resolution. Hey, let's go ahead and pull off all the stops. Yolo for 2018. Yeah, but. How do you think this works out here? Because we're seeing a lot of creative here. We're starting off with the Jungle Jace. Now we're seeing the double relics. I think the usual double relics I see was way back when Mordekaiser was a thing towards Spock. Well, I think what that does for UPD is it allows Alto to get more gold because having double relic shields in lane means that Shen will get more shared gold across the map and it'll help him accelerate the items that he needs to really help the rest of his team. I just wonder... How will TUP navigate through this slight bamboozle that UP yeah. is doing? It's a little bit of a... What do you call that thing? That, a Rubik's Cube right now that TUP is trying to decipher as far as UPD's composition. But let's go in and see if that deters them, though. A little bit of a knock there onto Alter just to make sure there's no further pursuit. Ooh, Alto goes straight in forward. The taunt onto Navi takes quite a bit of damage right there. Has to be a bit careful. Lower side of the bar of health here, my friend. It's very tricky bot lane there. Most ADCs really don't see Shen in the bot lane. You <laughs> normally see him top lane, so maybe you're unfamiliar, but Veer is gagging top lane. Oh, yeah, they're gonna go straight for a CD. That's gonna be the stun. A CD taking so much damage, forced to flash away. He's continuously being pursued by Veer. Will Veer get the snipe though? Is he gonna try? No, not quite. A CD will survive with a slither of health and makes the recall. Yeah, great play there. Great gank as well, right as Nona hit Meganar. So they had the extra CC to lock down Asedius Orin. And the flash burn means he now has to play a bit more passively in this lane. And I think he will be forced to burn his teleport to catch the wave so he doesn't fall that far behind. You know, towards this mid lane. 21 to 12. Interesting of a difference building up between Bomb and Salt. That is a way pushing in onto Salt to go at NC if he could try to balance things out by taking all those waves. Not quite, but still probably about a wave or two by... Oh, about a wave. About a wave and a half, nearly, of uh, a difference between Solace and Bam. But, you know, towards this bot side, though, looks like Yochan and Alto really getting a shove-in. CS differences are pretty equal between both marksmen, though. But, equal, but, of course, you still have to take into account that because of double relics, I'd say gold is definitely tilting towards Yochan and Alto's favor. Yeah, definitely, right? Because the gold share is in UPD's favor, having double support items, but Rex is not up here. Oh, he's going for the flank right in. Yochan forced to flash away. Looks like they'll be going for Alto instead. Doesn't get the knockup onto the Shen, though. That will be a stun. A little bit of damage here and there. Not a bad attempt there from TUP. What a great flash there by Yochan to get out of the threat range of the Rek'Sai. But still, that is a flash burn. And that will mean the Rek'Sai can possibly go for a repeat gank. And with Nico still having his flash, that's a very, very scary bot lane situation for UPD. 
Meanwhile, here lingering in that brush. Is he gonna try for anything? He's waiting for the opportunity. There goes Miko, goes for the knockup in onto Alto, but that will be a taunt in onto that mad cow. UPD converging onto him really, really fast. Miko very, very low. He's trying to walk it out, but gets a little bit of a heal, makes it out in the nick of time. But cool. Navi, is he gonna try for something though? They have to be careful here. Very low on mana as well though. TUP restraining themselves. Will they pursue Navi looking for that one auto attack? But no, you have to be careful, my friend. Very, very close call there for UPD Oblation Esports because if the Shen didn't use his Spirit's Refuge, he would have gone down for First Blood. So very slim margins right there. Oh, but still everything with all said and done. Things are looking pretty equal between both sides here. No First Bloods just yet. Both sides just playing it a little bit more calculated. But then again, I guess that is what you'd expect of not only a top-ranked team, but a uh, team as well that has a pretty strong foundation uh, and established knowledge of what this game is about. So The established knowledge of locking in Jungle Jace. <laughs> Good. Touché, touché. <laughs> but still, I mean, yeah, I'm still wondering how this kind of weighs in in the later parts. I'm still waiting for that wow factor as to how this composition goes full circle for UPD Limon. Well, we definitely see a lot of team fight coming from him. Having Nar, having Ariana, there's gonna come a point in this game where all that AoE can just destroy your team, but for TUP, their job is to really get Navi to that point where he can practically 1v5 because Vayne is one of those hyper carry marksmen where you get three, four items, so you're gonna be very hard to take down and you're gonna deal a massive amount of damage and unless you're able to burst down a vein very quickly at the start of a fight, there's really no way that UPD can deal with TUP's late game. Hmm. Still, with both sides, with all said and done, very... I wouldn't say calm, but it's just all very well calculated. We haven't seen that first blood just yet. There have been attempts though across the board from the top side. We have seen that prolonged skirmish towards the bot side, but still, nobody taking that clearly. If anything, the gold is dead even in fact. So this might go on for quite a bit of a while. Asidia forging his boots right then and there. We'll grant him a little bit of that movement. Oh, it looks like he's still trying to go for that forge. Builds up on cloth armor to deal with some of the pull coming in from Nero whenever he's in mini nar form. Whew. Pop side pushing out here for UP Dilemon as well. They're really shoving in Navi and Miko. I like this balance here. They're trying to take control of that way. It's actually ah. very smart, but oh, this would have traded in the top lane. Ooh, I see yeah, a little so. bit more of the tankier end though. Because I like that he immediately prioritizing that armor just so that he doesn't really have to worry about a lot of the auto attacks coming in from Nuna whenever he's in that ranged mini NAR form. Yeah, Nuna has to be very careful not to let Asedia really try and get close because if the Orn is able to stay within melee range of the NAR, the NAR has nothing to escape from the Orn because he has so much CC and so much tankiness really and once Asedja picks up what I believe would be a frozen heart. Nar will just deal practically no damage to him. And now that I realize, not just the Nar, but Veer and Yochan, they won't have that same dent that they can deal with this Jace and Seeger. So overall, uh, Asedja, it's not just a short-term item for the Nar in this laning phase. Just in general, even in the later parts, does help him. You gotta think about your future, man. Yeah, it's you gotta be secure. Get the insurance. Deep advice right there from Chisto, ladies and gentlemen. Get everything. <laughs> Plan for the future. Just Get not an in education. the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, for this bot lane right here, it's looking pretty balanced. I mean, there's not really much to say aside from just looking at what will happen in the long term here. Because I think that's why we're seeing a little bit of a stagnance from both sides. Gaiyang ng it's the investment ng both teams. They're looking at what they could do, what they could work around going into the mid and late game. And as for investments, TUP, they have a vein. A very, very good late game investment, oh, yeah. I should say, because she does scale very well, but for UPD, once they get their ultimates up, I wouldn't be surprised to see them begin pulling the trigger because they're gonna have to force fights at some point in this game because they can't let TUP scale. <sighs> well, here, this is the tricky part right here. I mean, I like that UPD, they're not really trying anything towards mid lane, especially against the Vladimir, because, I mean, we've been talking about how Vladimir not only has a sustain, could be quite the annoying force. To, I get, But then again, it, I guess it is because of Veer running a Jace, where you don't really have that same solid CC as you would that heavier lockdown. So as a result, just makes that Sanguine pool 
the optimal escape tool when you're dealing with a Jace in the jungle and an Orion in the mid lane if ever ganks do occur. So. Yeah, I definitely agree with that point you made, Arctic, where Jace doesn't have that same CC as something Jarvan would exactly. provide. Where all you really do is poke at somebody <laughs> and we know Jace as a champion, he needs gold, he needs to snowball to be very effective once mid to late game comes because if he doesn't get the same lead, he wouldn't have the luck of poking down someone. Oh no, we're oh actually it's the drawing onto Zah. Meanwhile, that will be the knockup coming in from the Orin. Man, a lot is happening right here. Sandy Knight is coming in from the champ, but no Solus goes down before he can save his fallen comrade. That will be first blood going to Acedia. Meanwhile, Acedia looks like he's not done just yet. Nona tries to go for Nona, but no. Mukhang will pick the Nona parang Orin natin. Atras muna mga hibigan to UP with that first kill. Yeah, a bit too deep there for Solus. Even though he had the stand united for protection, not enough. There's too much damage coming from to UP. So, UPD's mid laner goes down to first blood. Oh, oh Taunt not connecting onto Navi, but Navi goes for the ultimate. Deals a little bit there onto Yochan. Just gets those bullets in and out. But looks like Alto, he's gonna try for something. That Taunt will be up in just a bit. Mufang persistent comes to Yochan. Jangsi Alto exhaust. Gonna be flashed out. Navi goes for the flash in. That will be a heal. But Nico comes in in the oh nick of God. time. But Yochan pushes in. Alto getting the kill. But here comes the CD as well. He's seeking. Vengeance for his fallen comrade. That will be the stun. Yojan goes down to Miko. Nona comes in as well with the teleport. This is support versus top lane for both Megan sides. Up soon. They're just coming in for the chase. That will be a knockup. That will be the shove out onto Alto. Meganarp shoved in for Nona. But here comes Bam as well. This is quite the long fight that we're seeing here. Alto tries to dash oh. it out. Here comes Veer from the back line as well as Solus. Alto actually managing to survive. But Yambu is straight in trying to take down Alto. But no, he ends up dying. And that will end in a one for two in favor of UPD Liman. Yeah, the Meganar right there coming in at the right time to give UPD the win in the skirmish and that will lead to them picking up the first Drake of the game. It is a Cloud Drake though, but what this does do is open up new roads, new opportunities for possibly more better suited dragons yeah. that give more to your team. <laughs> Just all about looking towards the future, my friends. Pero, yeah, I mean, even with that dragon take, even with everything that happened, the goal difference, it's still anybody's game. I mean, we're still at this point. We're in both sides. Because of both, how to you feel? Okay, that will be the taunt, though. On to Zaza, trying to run this out. Queen of the Cersei makes her clean escape right there. But take note, guys. Looks like UPD have already made the switcheroo towards top sending. Both Alto and Yochan in the top lane. Yeah, this is UPD showing off their macro experience. I credit this team for having really good macro skills. And already a very early rotation. No towers have gone down yet. And have already sent the Sivir up in the top lane. And Alto is warding very, very aggressively at the moment. Actually, I like that you brought up that point about UPD's macro. Because for me, when you look at the composition of UPD, it's actually... There's a lot of movement speed that they could work with to complement the... I mean, it's pretty much established. If you think of a team na on point that is so much when the macro is LVL, UPD would probably one of those would be one of those teams that are at the top of this show. And if you're going to look at elements like the Severe, like the Orianna, like the Jace, everybody has that movement speed that allows them to maneuver across this map. Yeah, but we're talking about UPD strengths, and I think what they're trying to do is shut down what TUP is good at. Most of TUP's game, I've seen them just win from their very strong laning phase and transition that into their victories, and that's what's really given them the top spot right now in the LVL. I think UP, they're trying to end the laning phase as soon as possible. They've already rotated their members around the map, so maybe this is the game plan that will help them knock down the top spot. At the end of the day, let's go ahead and see. I mean, guys, we've had this long break, so... UPD definitely did their homework, in which case, really having a clear game plan. Going oh. Up against. oh, that will be the shove in, though. On to Navi, gets decimated. Beer getting the kill. Full collapse right then and there for both Nuna and Beer. That's very scary. If you're a Vayne that is alone in <laughs> under your tower, they will just knock you into the wall. And what that means, first blood turret going over to Blake and Esports. And like you mentioned, with these win conditions, we're going full circle for UPD in mind. Able to get that turret. Meanwhile, though, TOP, both Asidia and Sa 
going for this Rift Herald. Yeah, I think this is the smartest response that you can deal with because they saw the jungler go down bot lane, so that means we will have a numbers advantage towards the top side of the map. Oh, that being said, oh, so that, that will be the knockup bomb. Go straight and look at the damage. Oh, that will be the ultimate. Not quite connecting, but still a Cedia lands the kill on Solus. Yeah, unfortunately the shockwave whiffed, but I don't think that would have mattered. It was just so much damage, so much CZ to have to deal with, and Rift Herald already gonna give a tower over to TUP, so towers instantly evened up. Oh, uh, let's see how much value TUP gets out of this Rift Herald. None of the members of UPD are actually making their way just so it looks like Yalto will be the first to go to try to defend that turret. Yochen as well, slowly. Okay. Still pushing. That was a long arrow that traveled its Whoa. way onto yeah, Yoshin right there. What? Wow. Wow. Yeah, no. Buy one, take one right there for TUP. And also, gonna try to go in onto Bomb. Bomb tries to win this out. That is a Vladimir, though. It's gonna be able to save, but no, the rest of UPD is gonna go full on collapse. Nona goes in. Bomb, one more hit, and you're down, my friend. And down he goes. Nona gets the kill. Yeah, a bit too deep here, and Sanguine Pool not up at the right time. But even though that kill went over to UPD, both mid lane towers went down just for the Rift Herald. And man, that's so much value going over to TUP. So very well played push right there. Not a bad balance there for TUP as well. Not too much. So very good balance. <laughs> But so, oh, oh! pop-up right there from three members of TUP. Surprise, Alto! We're going to be getting you, and looks like he's trying to run this out. But no, he'll just have to sacrifice himself. Meanwhile, Miko goes for the flash, actually avoids the skill shot coming in from here. Teleport as well. Turn around. In from Nuna. Is this going to be a full-on fight? Miko takes so much damage. Nuna getting the kill. Now be trying to back away as well as uh, Asidia going to try to zone for his comrades that are trying to go for full-on escape. Souls goes in. Now be forced to flash away to avoid the Orianna ultimate. That will be UPD on the offense towards this top lane. Yeah. Great flash right there by Na'Vi to get out of the Orianna Shockwave. And with that cooldown already burned, can TUP defend this top lane? Ooh, see you know, you have to watch out for right Meganar. Whoa, that is going to be the knockup coming in. Two-man knockup on the members of UPD. The one fear is the first to fall. But take note, Na'Vi very, very low. Continuously pursued by Nuna. But that will be Bomb going straight. And Solus will be the next casualty. Bomb getting the kill. He's on fire at this point. Yochan trying to back away. He's being pursued by Ossidia. Nuna tries to support support his ADC, but Yochan looks like we'll be able to escape this little help. I can't really say the same for Nuna though. Just one more hit, but oh, he actually survives. And that is quite the luck for UPD, man. Yeah, just say. by the skin of his teeth right there. And unfortunately, even though they were able to gnar the vein into the wall, they weren't able to take down Na'Vi and TUP, they hold their top lane tower and they will take down UPDs in response. And turn it down, TUP, man, this is just a little bit more of a ping pong game that we're seeing here, but it's interesting because a lot of proactivity coming in from UPD Liman. But if you're gonna look at the long term, whoever gets a lot more value in these trades, TUP gets a lot more value after, in my opinion. Yeah, speaking of value, that three man blast phone. Oh, yeah. Started everything off, but look at this fight right here. They didn't respect the Mega Nar, but they knew they could take this fight. Even though the Nar was massive, there wasn't anything to follow up. The shockwave was already burned. Nobody was in range to deal damage to TUP's carries, and that just allowed them to run away with this fight. Para may naalala tuloy ako ng huli nating TUP game. I think tayo dalawa yung nagkakasman. We were trying to highlight Zaf for being that enabler for the rest of TUP, and that's kind of what happened to him in that fight. He was frontlining, he was the first to fall, pero... The end result, the value that you get for the greater good of PvP after everything that transpired. What a team player. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, looking at things here, take note, guys. Dragon is now live right now. So it's a cloud drake, though. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of like the. We've been me and Vulcan were talking about how Infernal Drake's kind of like the popular kid in school. Kid cool kids. Well, Everybody wants to be part of it. Yeah. Every. It's kind of like that Katy Perry song, but oh my god, where are we going with this? <laughs> Meanwhile, it looks like TUP going to start this dragon right now. Are they going to try to go for it, though? Beer is within the vicinity. Is he's he going to try to contest that guy just, just wants attention. Yeah, I just Senpai's notice me from TUP. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I don't have to go through high school without being noticed by anybody. But still, it looks like Navi going to be helping out as well. It looks like this is going to be a dragon that UPD will gladly give up for the meantime. Yeah, I think they're going to opt to push down this top lane tower. I think Bam can possibly defend. He's trying to clear the wave. Ooh, bomb low. And oh, Olin. Is he going to go in, though? That's a very gutsy. Oh, goes 
for the Hex Tech oh, right in there. Goodness. Also take quite a bit of damage. But Yochan, is he going to try to go for a bomb? Just one more hit. And down you go, my friend. And that will be that extra stand United just to make sure that Yochan survives just fine. Yeah, numbers advantage right there. I think he tried and... Uh, he went over aggressive right there, trying to defend the tower versus two people. Unfortunately for him, he was locked down long enough and without any more tools to get out of that, he was just really stuck between a rock and a hard place. So, great play as well by UPD. Knowing that the Vladimir doesn't have anything to escape, they go for the aggressive dive. Now, also, <laughs> I like how the first doesn't this meant for the fruit, but still. He was I hungry, man. Yeah, I'm... Oh, I'm, I'm good, I'm full, but... <laughs> he has it at his lunch. <laughs> 34. Again, I keep on going back to the stats here, but... I, I think it's pretty much safe to say that it's still anybody's game. I mean, let's go ahead and check out who is pretty much spearheading for both sides here. So, for TUP, I mean, as he is sitting at a great 301 for this Ord right now. As far as item completion, Righteous Glory already up for him and... Meanwhile, for the side of Yuki Diliman, I'd say that Nona definitely in a better place as well. If anything, it's actually, well, with the exception of Yo Chan, who's sitting at a 2 1. Bam, Solus, as well as Navi, not in the best position as far as KDA is right now. But then again, this game has quite a long way to go. KD doesn't tell the entire story. Indeed. Look at their items Proto Belt, Leon Yu's Tor uh, Torment, <laughs> Infinity Edge already on the vein. She's going to deal massive amounts of damage in this team fights if she's left untouched so kda might be a bit uh it would be it. yeah it would be both deceiving and technically irrelevant since like you did mention this is a vein that we're talking about and as this game goes later on that's where she's just gonna really pop off for TUP, but let's go ahead and see though, because from what I've been seeing here, it looks like both TUP and UPD have been voting their time to make sure that they do reach those optimal spikes. Yeah, and we're talking about Vayne right now, and I think the mindset for every Vayne player is that all cameras are currently on them and they're recording for their montage. That's just <laughs> yeah. the mindset that you have to be on if you want to play Vayne. It's like, you really have to show off your mechanical ability. You want to be that superstar for TUP. But let's go ahead and see if Navi can pull that out. I mean, he's had some pretty good games so far in the LVR. A few, a more, more hits than misses, I'd say. That's for sure. But still, Yubi Diliman is still picking up a good pace here as well. I mean, we've still been questioning ourselves as how, as to how this composition goes full circle with the Relic Shield starts for both Yochan and Alto, not to mention here as well in the jungle in itself is a I wouldn't say a question mark, but it's just one of those things that you know was planned out for UPD Liman. You're just waiting for how it just works out in the long run. I wonder, will UPD pull the trigger here? Mm. They're hovering around the barren area trying to re-establish vision because right now... Oh, the top! Oh, that's going to be the full in coming in for That's a lot! Team. Man, Miko just goes down right away. He was just outnumbered. He was just a dead cow at that time. What can UPD take off of that pick though? I think that was a great pickup, but... There is no more Shockwave. Bam is in a tight spot. Oh no, Bam, are you going to be the next to fall, my friend? That's not the best position to be in when you're dealing with four members of UPD Neymar. Looks like he will be able to survive, though. That will cost him a flash. Not to mention both summoners. Okay, now UPD, you need to be very careful because Nico is spawning very soon. Oh, one v one. TUP just finding himself in this awkward position to oh, the God. Up, but that will be a three-man knockup onto the members of UPD Liman. Looks like Navi gonna try to style his way into the members of UPD Liman, but no, he has to restrain himself. Teleport coming in from Luna. That is five members of UPD trying to knock down that inner turret from TUP. But still, they will be able to fend off that wave, TUP. For yeah, the meantime, I think UPD, they need to be careful here. They don't have the key ultimates they need to team fight. Nona is nowhere near Meganar. Solis. Shockwave is coming up soon, so they're just waiting for that ability to UP. And Can they make use of his window? That blast from here, though, not even dealing a dent onto either... Was that Acedia or Miko or Acedia and Bomb? But either way, I think it just goes to show how much TUP is ready at this point to deal with all those elements of AD coming in from UPD. Because like I mentioned, um, We've been talking about how SCD is kind of building out for the long term here. Oh, that feels good. And not to mention everyone else across the board. I mean, Za as well. He's building up on the armor as well. So 
will be able to sustain a lot of that damage coming in from Nuna, coming in from Veer, coming in from Yochan. So, if anything, it's really going to be up to Solos to try to make up for all the damage that TUP is going to be able to tank as far as their armor. Yeah, and I think this is smart by TUP. Smart itemization. They know that at this stage, Solus isn't a threat yet because he did fall behind in lane, unfortunately. So, there still isn't any magic damage threat. So, they opted to build more towards armor and really deal with the fed members of UPD. And <laughs> for some reason, I'm having flashbacks. Look at the number of control wards across the board for UPD. And it kind of brings me back to those days when you were coaching our teams and, you know... Dude, wards save lives. Exactly. And <laughs> it looks like... The same holds highly for UPD Liman, in which case they're going to be on top of their vision game, that's for sure. That's a great philosophy to live by if you want <laughs> to win in League of Legends, man. Vision control gives you more information, it helps you dictate the way you want to play the game. And UPD, they might pull the trigger here. They're speeding their way onto Bob. Well, Bob is going to try to make his escape. That was in Sanguine pull in. Looks like TUP going to go try to go for the counter engage, but no, Veer actually manages to take down Bam, but looks like TUP going to try to look Mega for the targets. There's a lot of low targets there on the side of UPD Liman, but still. Nona gonna try to shove out the members of the Here comes Alta from the back lane. They're gonna go straight for it. Uh, but Navi trying to hit from the back Look line. Not feeling enough though. Asidia just in the front line tanking so much damage. But TUP, they're trying to go on the run here. UP Dilemon, they're gonna continue the pursuit though. Not enough movement speed to go chase all the way, but still, that will be end in a one for nothing. In favor Very of slim margins right there for TUP. I want to highlight Nico on Alistar. He knocked away. Nona when he transformed into Meganar, so he wasn't able to instantly get the Nar combo just from the Shockwave, so very well played by TUP support to disengage that fight because that could have gone disastrous and that could have turned possibly into a Baron if UPD picked up more members. Fortunately for TUP, only the Vladimir went down. That was actually pretty good for UPD. Man, getting that one kill, transitioning that to an Infernal Drake because that's what we talked about earlier. The... QP, they're able to deal with a lot of the damage coming in from UPD just because of the ADs across the board with the exception of Solas. But because of that Infernal Dragon take, it kind of, I wouldn't say it balances out things, but definitely helps them get a bit more of a dent onto TUP as they continue to build up armor, particularly both Saw and Asidia. And Nico as well on the South Star. Yeah, they now have the cool kids in their side. <laughs> yeah, you, TUP got the nerd, but hey. UPD gladly gonna be with the popular guys right there, but still, let's go ahead and see for TUP. I mean, it's interesting though. We did see Bomb go straight in. I don't think, I'm not sure if it was TUP being a little bit in too late to follow up with Bam, or Bam just being a little bit over aggressive there. No, I think it was UPD being too fast to run away that's true, from me that's because true. they have the acceleration gate from Jace and they have the silver speed up as well, so. If you think you're safe, QPD just closes the gap instantly with their movement and suddenly you're in the middle of five people. <laughs> I need to run away, run for my life. But oh. we are going to see a fight. Okay, TUP, that's going to be a three, man. No, actually, Yocha, that's going to be a lot of damage off the Solus as well as the Veer. He gets decimated right off the bat. Bomb continuing to chase Solus. That will be the double kill for the Vladimir. That will be two members of UPD Liman down. Yochan might be Great the next one. Bomb continuing to chase, but no, Yochan will be able to escape under turret. The rest of UPD, Nona as well as also make a clean escape. But TUP, they head straight for the Baron. Yeah, Veer is down for the next 20 seconds. No jungler for UPD. I wonder, we've seen steals happen from Nona before on this NAR. Can he do it again? Yeah, and I believe in miracles for UPD. Is that going to be the case? So, Bam, trying to zone out Alto as well as Yochan. They're slowly making their way for the Baron. Are they going to get the steal? No! Oh, they actually get the steal! UPD Liman, ladies and gentlemen, they get the Baron. But still, Yochan, he is going to go down. They don't get the buff, but they at least make sure that TUP does not get the benefit of that Baron. Nona is an absolute monster on this NAR. And like you mentioned, our miracles do happen. UPD deny the Baron buff from TUP, and that will give them a bit of breathing room in this game. What a steal! Wow, just when you think that TUP will finally be able to build up on the momentum, they fumble at that mass moment. But I'm not gonna say just fumbling for a TUP. UPD played out beautifully, particularly in the Let's go ahead and check out that replay though. So that Baron continuously being focused on by TUP. Bam! Definitely trying to zone it out takes also a as well as the Special time. degree of crazy to do this. In the middle of four members, straight into the Baron pit. Frame perfect Nona steals the Baron. Smite even went down. Uh, <laughs> that was absolutely 
crazy right Somebody there. emailed Mark Maron. <laughs> What's that? I don't know, man. That was well well played, well played. You can deal it, man. And in all fairness to them, this grants them, like you mentioned, gives them that room to breathe. And all hope is not lost. We're still pretty much looking at an even playing field for both sides. Sure, UP Dilemon might not have the benefit of that there, but it's still better than just giving it straight off to TNT. Yeah, I'd say that's the best they could make out of a True. very, very bad situation. So, great play right there. I wonder, will TUP pull the trigger again soon? And, or maybe UPD will. I mean, they have tools to go for engages, but during these previous team fights, it has been TUP that has been first. Let's see who will pull the trigger first. That must be frustrating as hell for TUP, I mean, that could have just granted. That's them. an understatement, man. Yeah, I'm. I could. I, I don't. I don't even want to be in that room right now, with after that Baron steal. But still, let's go ahead and see how this goes down, though, because with that Baron steal, there's still a lot. I mean, it's not really that significant to bring up the gold difference, but at least it's a little bit of that one inch of a step for UP Diliman that at least makes sure that they're on even playing field with UP. UPD actually is holding the goal lead since they have a lead in towers taken. So the macro play right there showing they may look like they are behind in kills and goals. And during the previous team fights, it has been TUP that has been coming out on top. But UPD, they have more gold, they have more resources at the moment. But the pressure is on TUP's side. Oh, Will we see a dive? Look at the clear. Looks like UPD, they're going to be clearing out those waves. CUP probably feeling the thirst of, man, if only we had that Baron to get those waves pushing in onto that turret. And UPD just clears that out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, without Baron buff, it's practically impossible to push versus what is Orianna, Sivir, and Jace combined. <laughs> exactly. That's a lot of wave clear. And looks like Bomb going to try to go for a split towards this mid lane, though. Just can he had the long minion wave in the mid lane and then saw us well gonna be trying to get his compadre. Yeah, Taka had bits and good. Meanwhile though, looks like TP, they're gonna try to go for a split configuration here. So we will be dealing with that wave pushing in on the mid lane. But yeah, and that's smart. That's tricky though. TUP, I mean with all said and done, they're not able to get as much of a dent onto these turrets, even with the proactivity of trying to go for these splits and Oh, oh we're gonna see it die. <laughs> Almost Do it. Come on, TP. Oh, Zod though. Looks like he's trying to make a little bit of damage there onto that turret, but still. Oh, Novir. Oh, Navi. Tries for something. Okay, not quite though. Meanwhile, TP, they do get a little bit of leverage though by starting out to get this turret. It's a little bit of a slow take though. I mean, those are basically no. tanks. Oh, Nona though. Take note. Getting a no nice teleport towards this bot lane that will be a turret down, but then again. This uh -oh. might be TUP trading and Somebody outer... has to defend the bot lane of TUP. Nobody's making a recall though, Chisto. Still... This is gonna be tricky. That will be a turret down. Oh no. For TUP. Oh no, Za takes a lot of damage coming in from here. He's just getting chased down by that jungle. Jade. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Oh man, looks like this is go coming in. That will be the knock -up. No, he's not able to get the returning knock up from the ramp, but that will be TUP collapsing Knockwave. under the turret of UP Dilemma. That will be one member down. Are we gonna see two? Looks like TUP there trying to look for targets. That will be only safe for a bound, but still that was an inhibitor loss by TP. Oh. They have to make the most of this two-man knock up on the members of Yupi Diliman. Looks like that's gonna be the full conversion of Yupi Diliman. Beer will be the only member remaining to defend, but still no recall. Just continuing the split though. Is anybody gonna recall from TUP? That will be a teleport coming in from Acedia to go for the defense. Looks like he will be forced to have to contend with Nuna. Meanwhile, Za, they're gonna go straight for Beer. That will be the knockup. Down he goes. Nuna just continuing to get the push on. That will be Nexus turret number one. He'll have to make the recall for the meantime, though, my friends. But still, TUP looks like patience is a virtue for them. They're able to get that inhibitor turret as well as an inhibitor. Oh my god, these base race situations are so pressure practice. Alto to defend the inhibitor, so things look fairly even. It was UPD that came up with a Nexus Tower take, so they are one tower closer to taking down TUP's Nexus. But man, look at this fight. This fight is practically UPD trying to hold on by time for Nona to take down the towers. But unfortunately, even though the Shockwave landed, there was nobody to instantly follow up again and no NAR to affect the fight. If Nona was here in Mega NAR form, this fight could have possibly gone in TUP's favor, but unfortunately for them, numbers advantage for TUP just too much. Man, with two with an inhibitor for inhibitor down for both sides. I'd still say though, good job to Nuna, not only getting that inhibitor, 
but at least one Nexus turn. And that definitely grants a little bit more flexibility for UP dealing run, as more as what pressure they can deal to balance out things with TUP. Uh, this is a stage of the game where whatever you decide to do, whatever your call is as a team, it might be the thing that gives you the victory or the defeat because we're heading into that very, very uh, sort of late game, very decision-based macro style of play and I think this favors UTD. And this is gonna have that same benefit of Acedia having a teleport to deal with Nuna or... I mean, Nuna himself doesn't have teleport, but then again, I mean, TUP, that bot lane is quite right now and... But same for UPD. So UPD can just barrel down top lane and just destroy the Nexus. That's true. But let's go ahead and see UPD demand. They're starting to converge towards this mid lane. Are they going to try to continue to shove threats? Go ahead and see. I'd though. like to quickly point out Baron is spawning now. Oh. Go ahead and see. Looks Multiple like TUP. They're going to try to look for a fight. No, it does not connect onto any of the members, but they're going to try to continue to chase. That will be a little bit of a slowdown. Asidia really intent on chasing down the members of UP Dilemon. Will they be able to be fruitful? Well, no, that will be the case. Looks like UP Dilemon is going to take it easy for the meantime. Okay, now 35 minutes into the game, Baron is up. Both teams posturing towards his mid lane. Call of the Forge God is not available for the next few seconds, so that is a window for UPD to possibly get a push down. But I think right now they're just gonna... Oh no, Miko! Really get picked oh, off. Miko, that will be Zah and Miko converging onto him. But still, the damage is not quite enough Miko for UPD to take down here. That will be Altua, so we're going for the Convergence taunt in onto Miko. Miko gets decimated! No one getting the kill. Asidia looks like he's gonna try to go for Solos here. But no, TUP with one member down. They look like they wanna risk it. Looks like that won't be the case. As TUP, they're gonna try to go for the defense for the meantime. Baron is up, as Shisu mentioned. So that's another thing that TUP has to take into account of. 26 seconds left before Miko comes back up online. And it looks like UPD did not opt to go for the Baron. They're gonna use this numbers advantage to take down possibly the mid tower of TUP. Can they hold? They don't have that many options for wave clear. And Wave is still slowly making his way to the mid lane. And Miko, just in the nick of time, will be up in five seconds. So that will allow TUP to even out the numbers here if ever something does ensue between both sides. Looks like UPD Demon will take it easy for the meantime. Yeah, I expect both these teams to just wait for the right moment around that Baron area. Both of them are eyeing that objective. That big purple worm on Summoner's <laughs> Rift is probably the most important objective at the moment because. Whoever takes that might win this game. Indeed. Or whoever steals it. I mean, I it earlier. Let's go ahead and see. If, if you thought Infernal Drakes were cool kids, ah. Baron is the cooler kid. Yeah, exactly. He's kind of like the... I don't even know how to put it. What's better than the coolest kid on the block? I don't know. Baron. Oh. Yeah, there, yeah, I guess Baron has his own category in himself right there. But that will be Miko getting oh, the knockup no! onto Solas. That will be the knockup in. Ultimate coming in from the Oriana, but still, Solas, we might be dead meat here. Asidia now dominating and getting the kill. This is going to be big for TUP. Let's go ahead and see what they decide to go for. It looks like they'll be going straight for this mid lane, not even paying attention to the Baron. TUP, they're ignoring the Baron even though the Oriana is down. I wonder how much can they take here? Indeed. Or still though, Solas, that's still 40 seconds left before he comes back online to help Yupi Dilemon go for the defense here. Beard just trying to uh, land hits on flash. the front line, but that's going to be five members of TUP. Solas tries to go in, made up, will be a two-man knock up the members of Yupi Dilemon. They're trying to back out, also just trying to stand both of the damage, but still it's just too much for him to deal with, with five members converging onto him. Asidia getting the kill, they're going to go for this turret. Could this be the game though? That is the bigger question at hand. Inhibitor going to be pursued by TUP. That will be another knockup in onto the members Watch of Yupi Dilemon. Nuna shoves out the rest of TUP, tries to balance things out as they go for the recall. Nuna very, very low though. He has to be very careful. Oh, Watch out! It's the next ball! That will be three members of UP Demon that are down. TUP turn back. That will be the inhibitor that they're going for next. Three members of UP Demon are going to go on the defense. Solas is now back online, ladies and gentlemen. Will it be enough to go for the defense though? That will be the knockup onto Veer. Veer trying to back away. The they have to defend. Way. 
but still TUP, they're starting to converge onto these Nexus turrets. Bomb getting the kill onto Veer. That will be two members of UP Diliman going on the defense right now. Bomb just really zoning out the members of UP Diliman, preventing them from going for the defense, while the rest of TUP goes for these Nexus turrets. Also gonna go straight in onto the members of TUP. Just the Nexus the left. On TUP Diliman, Nexus is up and vulnerable for the members of TUP to take, but still, that will be Solus quite in the difficult position right there. None of the members of TUP are focusing on the Nexus. It's very, very messy. Nuna. Nuna will be the next to fall. Also, tries to save his fall. That's it. And stand united. Ladies and gentlemen, after quite the game right here for match two, game one, going to be going to TUP. What a crazy ending to a very crazy game, I should say, Arctic. And man, it was just TUP coming out on top. And that pick into Solace around the Baron area really sealed UPD's fate, unfortunately for them. The numbers advantage, TUP making great use of that, just pushing in for the win. Yeah, that was... I need a glass of water after that last fight because that was pretty intense. Very well played by TUP. Again, at that last moment, we were questioning, should have TUP gone for the Baron? But I guess in the long run, it just goes to show that that was the right decision that they made right there. Let's go ahead and check out the end statistics, though. Man, I said you're perfect <laughs> KDA. That Eight feels good, eight. man. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Not <laughs> dying in a game. Especially on an Orin and... That was pretty definitive right there. And, and take note, he's not even, he's only third on the list as far as gold leads here. If you're going to compare him to the rest of TUP. But then again, I got to give my props to UPD as well. Again, they just really played to their advantages in that game. Was enough though towards the end. But man, the damage though coming in from Bomb as well as Solas. Both mid laners really dishing out quite a bit there. Yeah, doing so much work. But the mid laner that did more damage, did come out on top, so showing right there. Yeah, just a little bit of a thousand there, but then again, that's just the cherry on top after a victory for TUP. So, ladies and gents, game one palang yan ng ating best of two between UPD and TUP. When we come back, will UPD Lehman be able to equal things out 1 1, or will TUP just spearhead away into yet another 2 0 into that playoffs? We'll find out in just a bit. We have been your caster, some Arctic at your service, and with me is GSL. Ito! on Garena Low Varsity League 2017 Summer Term, powered by Lenovo, Light the Sky. We'll be right back in just a bit. Very good balance. <laughs> <laughs> What's oh! oh! Pop-up right there from three members of TUP. Surprise, Alto! We're gonna be getting you, and looks like he's trying to run this out, but no, he'll just have to sacrifice himself. Meanwhile, Miko goes for the flash, actually avoids the skill shot coming in from here. Teleport as well. Turn around. In from Nuna. Is this gonna be a full-on fight? Miko takes so much damage. Nuna getting the kill. Dabi trying to back away as well as uh, Asiga gonna try to zone for his comrades that are trying to go for full-on escape. Souls goes in. Now before he flash away to top lane. You have to watch out for Meganar! Whoa, that is gonna be the knockup coming in. Two man knockup on the members of UP Dilema Fear. It's a first to fall, but take note, Navi very, very low. Continuously pursued by Nuna, but that will be Bomb going straight in. Solos will be the next casualty. Bomb getting the kill. He's on fire at this point. Yochan trying to back away. He's being pursued by Ocidia. Nuna tries to support his ADC, but Yochan looks like will be able to escape this little low. I can't really say the same for Nuna though. Just one more hit, but oh, he actually survived. But we are gonna see a fight. Okay, TUP, that's gonna be a three man. No, actually Yochan that's going to be a lot of damage off the Solus as well as here He gets decimated right off the bat. Bomb continuing to chase Solus. That will be the double kill for the Vladimir. That will be two members of UPD Diliman down. Yochan might be the next to the Bomb continuing to chase. But no, Yochan will be able to escape under turret. The rest of UPD Mona as well as also make a clean escape. But TUP, they head straight for the Baron. Yeah, Fear is down for the next 20 seconds. No jungler for UPD. I wonder, we've seen steals happen from Nona before on this NAR. Can he do it again? Yeah, and I believe in miracles for UPD. Is that going to be the case? So, Bam trying to zone out Alto as well as Yochan. They're slowly making their way for the Baron. Are they going to get the steal? Oh, they actually get the steal! UPD Liman, ladies and gentlemen, they get the Baron. But still, Yochan, he's going to go down. They don't get the buff, but they at least like the go for coming in. That will be the knockup. No, he's not able to get the returning knockup from the Ram, but that will be TUP collapsing Shockwave. under the turret of UPD Liman. That will be one member down. Are we going to see two? Looks like TUP there trying to look for targets. Maybe one of the for down, but still that is an inhibitor loss by TP. Oh. They have to make the most of this two-man knockup on the members of UP Diliman. Looks like that's gonna be the full conversion of UP Diliman. Here will be the only member remaining to defend, but still Nona is continuing to fight, but that's gonna be five members of TP. Saw tries to go in mid up will be a two-man knockup on the members of UP Diliman. They're trying to back out, also just trying to stand both of the damage, but still it's just too much for him to deal with with five members converging onto him. Asidia getting the kill, they're gonna go for this turret. Could this be the game though? That is the bigger question at hand. Inhibitor 
inhibitor going to be pursued by TUP. That will be another knockup in onto the members of oh, Yupi Diliman. Nuna shoves out the rest of TUP. Tries to balance things out as they go for the recall. Nuna very, very low though. He has to be very careful. Oh, Yaja, it. It's the next goal. That will be three members of Yupi Diliman that are down to Yupi. Turn back. That will be the inhibitor that they're going for next. Three members of Yupi Diliman are going to go on the defense. Solas is now back online, ladies and gentlemen. Will it be enough to go for the defense though? That will be the knockup onto Veer. Veer trying to back away. They have to defend. Way. But still, TUP, they're starting to converge onto these Nexus turrets. Bomb getting the kill onto here. That will be two members of Yupi Diliman going on the defense right now. Bomb just really zoning out the members of Yupi Diliman, preventing them from going for the defense. While the rest of TUP goes for these Nexus turrets. Also, gonna go straight in onto the members of TUP. Yes, just the Nexus turret. On TUP Diliman, Nexus is up and vulnerable for the members of TUP to take. But still, that will be Solus quite in the difficult position right there. None of the members of TUP are focusing on the Nexus turret. Very, very messy. Nuna. Nuna will be the next to fall. Also, tries to save. That's it. With Sam United. Ladies and gentlemen, after quite the game right here, for match two, game one, gonna be going to TUP. What a crazy ending to a very crazy game, I should say, Arctic. And man, it was just TUP. Not enough Garena shells to buy the latest League of Legends skin on sale now? Get shells anytime, anywhere with your Globe or Touch mobile number. Go to gamer.com.ph and sign up with your mobile number and enter the verification code you will receive via SMS. Log in and choose the game and pin you want. Check out to purchase the PIN with your load or through your postpaid account and receive the PIN on your phone instantly. Never miss a sale on your favorite League of Legends skins and champions with Gamer.